Félix. Ok, ya yo le di la regla en Camerino a los dos. Quiero una pelea limpia. Give me both the rules, give me both. Give me clean fight, take hands. Clearly as animated a macho man as we've seen in the several fights we've covered involving Hector Camacho. I think Hector's very serious. He understands. He understands the importance of this fight. He understands the opportunity. He has the experience. He has the talent. He should be able to teach this green kid a lesson. But the green kid is not just a green kid. It's a green kid with a cannon in his glove. So let's see what happens on most interesting fights. Round one scheduled for 12 for the IBF Waterway Championship. Felix Trinidad, for him to succeed, he's got a guard against getting frustrated by Camacho, which many fighters have succumbed to in the past. If Trinidad is impressive tonight, the rising star status and high expectations would be justified. Camacho moving up to the welterweight division is ring-wise. He knows all the tricks. He could give Trinidad problems. I think the speed as well as that experience are going to come into play here very early. We'll see if he gets frustrated, the young champion. We'll see if Camacho is very effective. Or it's also, being a southpaw can't help. That adds there. Again, you'll see. That southpaw style is going to add some frustration. He jumped in from the right side, hit the champion with a quick shot, and in and out. He's gone. These first rounds ought to be completely, completely uh, Camacho dominated because of his speed and his experience. He's been a multiple champion. He knows. He's been here. And uh, that's an awful lot to put on the line against a kid that's just barely arrived. And he knows how to fight defensively as well. He's a master in that area. He told us even in the shape I was for Chavez, I could beat Trinidad. Camacho told, uh, told us Chavez could not knock me out with the kitchen sink, so Trinidad won't get to me. But Camacho shouldn't underestimate Trinidad's punching power. Should point out that Camacho has never been knocked out. I think the way that Chavez cut off the ring and walked Camacho around, I think that was key for the way Camacho lost. Trinidad doesn't cut the ring off or close with that kind of pressure, so that's all in Camacho's favor. Camacho said he doesn't feel Trinidad punches as hard as Chavez. Plus, Felix doesn't apply as much pressure as Chavez. And uh, Hector feels that will be to his advantage. You know, guys, this is just starting up. And right now, all we got is Macho running, running, running. He hasn't been doing an awful lot of fighting. Who could you give this round to? Nobody's done anything so far. They're just feeling each other out. Like, for the first time, they've tangled toes. And you're going to see that all night long with a left-hander and a right-hander. Camacho's landed a few jabs. Uh, there have been some glancing blows hitting both men. But right now, very light. Maybe a slight edge to Camacho. But this is... This is where judging a fight of this nature becomes very, very objective. Well, for, for openers, Felix has got to throw something to take this round if he's going to take it at all because the only guy throwing anything is Camacho. Although he's throwing it into the air, he has landed a few glancing blows. So far, the only thing you can judge it. In light of the fact that it's such a big fight, monumental fight for a Felix Trinidad, do you think... You know, there's a tendency to show a little tightness on his part here in the first round. Well, I don't think he's ever seen anybody like, uh, like Camacho. It's going to take him two or three uh, rounds to, to get used to the excellence of uh, Macho Camacho and then get down into his kind of fighting. Time! We did by Booz because the audience, like us, wanted to see some action and didn't see it. Tito, let's listen. Oye, Neto, no brinque tanto, ¿sabes? Lo que yo quiero es que me muevas cintura y camine, ¿oíste? Seguimos así, ¿oíste? Esto es cuestión de tiempo, ¿sabes? He said, don't jump up and down, no jump. He's, he's moving around. Get down, don't jump. You're wasting your time getting it. Walk to him, walk to him. That's all right, he's got this round. He said, now you know he's no great whirling dervish. Go get him. Con turno dos de repetición, estamos hechos. They're very calm here. In this corner, they're very satisfied with Macho's work. Macho has uh, taken that round as far as they're concerned, as far as I'm concerned also. And uh, now comes Felix's time to stop bouncing with him and try to get into some kind of punch out with him. So it's round two. Camacho brings ring smart, speed, superb, but technical skills and three world titles into the fight. 
Some feel he is in a must-win situation against a man almost 10 years his junior. Trinidad also cat-like. Quick, sharp, calm, patient with knockout power in both hands. Well, Joe Cortez yelling, break, 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 but Felix kept hammering away. Fighters that uh, come in real quick, bum, bum, boom, hit you two, three quick easy shots and hold you are extremely frustrating. And there you can see Trinidad banging on the side, but when the referee says to stop and break, that's when you got to stop punching him inside. Like but he got in four good shots. See, see that stepping on the foot? Exactly what we said in the first round. They opened this round with that. He stepped on Macho Camacho's foot. He can't help it. It's right up there. He's very tall. He, he puts his foot up to, to charge, and there's Macho's foot. He's going to step on it. That's one of the awkward parts of boxing with Southpaw again. You'll see, again, stepping on his feet on a regular basis. This is something that's going to work right now. The reach and the height to Trinidad's advantage. As well as he doesn't do the moving. Trinidad 5'11", a 70-inch reach. Camacho 5'6 and a half, a 67-inch reach. Camacho threw the first really serious intent to hurt punch just then and missed it by a mile. But at least Macho's trying. At this point, Macho is pursuing rather than the other way around. That's There's exactly that. right. Look who's backing up now. There's a trickle of blood left eye of Felix Trinidad. Oh, boy. This is just starting, and now he's got another problem. He's got blood coming out of the corner of his eye. It's over the, the eye, not in a good place, right at the corner of the eye. That's going to bleed all the way through. Tough to stop those. Tough to stop that. Trinidad has never lost 22-0 with 19 knockouts, 9 straight KOs, third highest knockout ratio of all present world champions. It would be a shame to see a cut like this factor in so that Trinidad can't fight his fight, so that fight would get stopped, because I don't think it was a clean punch. It had to be somewhere in that little bit of a holding and wrestling that hits banged accidentally. I never saw a good clean shot that could have done with that cut. No, I, think that, that, I, think that was I think that was a headshot. Left hand missing by Camacho. Showing the quickness of Trinidad. And now it's Trinidad on the attack and Camacho going back as we figured it would be for the whole fight. Oh, nice right hand by Trinidad. Not a lot of steam on it, but he got to him. And a countering left by Hector Camacho. Swing and a miss at the bell. Let's see if we can uh, examine that cut closer here. He just asked, cut, and he said, yeah, but it's very little. We'll take care of it. Now let's see how they take care of it. At first, it's the pressure by that gauze, and it's got to leave it there a little bit longer than that. You've got pressure. is more important than any gunk you put in it. Pressure and holding it. Now he just told him, don't, don't get desperate because you get cut. Now let's look, look at the way, look, there you go, there. You see his, his foot right on top of uh, uh, Camacho? That makes Camacho get off balance. At some point, he's going to be able to uh, use that to his advantage. He missed there. This probably is the cut, Bobby. Take a look well, I'll tell you what, I think, they, I think they had a bang hit somewhere along in here. Possibility of, uh, you know, just swinging an elbow. Could have been anything. Well, the one thing they told him in the corner, we can take care of it. It's very little. Don't let it affect you. But I tell you what, what's affecting him is Camacho's ring mastery right now because so far he's won the first two rounds on my card unofficially because he's just doing better boxing. Well, I agree with you. I think right now he's carried the little bit of the action to Trinidad a little better, a little more effective. Trinidad's confused, but I think what Trinidad, Trinidad has to stop worrying about is all the little punches. He's going to get hit with some of them. Walk through and try and land some bombs, hit him to the body, slow some things down. He can't block every shot of a fighter that's quick, which is not going to happen. And, and if he thinks, if he has a hope that Macho Camacho is going to slow down, he is wrong. Macho will do this in 12 rounds. Trinidad has a little respect for Camacho. He ranked his top three Puerto Rican fighters. Camacho not among them. He listed Wilfredo Gomez, Wilfred Benitez, and Carlos Ortiz. And you have 
have to wonder if many of his fellow Puerto Ricans share the same opinion. They do for the simple reason that the Puerto Ricans are a great fight country, and they pride themselves on the bravery of their fighters. You couldn't fight with any more guts than Alfredo Gomez or Carlos Ortiz or Jorge Torres or Go Gonzalez. It's just a, a raft of great, great Puerto Rican fighters. And when uh, Macho came in, could have been that kind of fighter and chose show business instead, they, they just despised him for a while. It's almost ironic they call him the Macho Man because his type of fighting style is not that of a Macho Man. Yeah, that's the exact antithesis. He's always liked to live out the Macho image he has projected outside the ring. But uh, as we showed you on the feature, he went too far recently, having a run-in with a police officer. Well, I've had occasion to socialize with him, and outside the ring, he does do his best to live up to just that image. Well, he served a six-month house arrest to avoid a 90-day jail sentence. He served 200 hours of community service down in Florida. He could not leave his house without his lawyer. It was a leniency to let him train. He set up training camp at his house. It's the first time in the history of boxing where you think uh, a penalty of legal kind could improve your chances of winning a title, and it certainly has. Because he's doing a very good job here, although Felix is now picking it up this round. Felix Trinidad. With a good left hand. He hit him with a good left hand and then followed him with a lead right. He caught Camacho dead on the butt. And look at the way... Camacho ran and grabbed, and Camacho in a little bit of problems here. Remember, Camacho's never been stopped or knocked out. He's never faced a cannon like this kid. All of a sudden, a burst from wait, 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 Felix wait, 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 Trinidad here on the third round, final seconds. And a big change in the tide here. The flood waters are coming on for Macho Camacho. And Trinidad wants four after the bell. Has to be ripped away by Joe Cortez. Camacho, muévete nomás, muévelo ahorita. Algo que está fallando mucho. Como como le dije el primero, mijo, no tienes un problema. Métete al centro del ring, nunca te va a ver. Un chamaquito, pensando así. Respira hondo. That's right. Hey. All right, here's where the action picks up. Here's where Felix says, okay, now I'll taste some of what it's going to be like for the rest of this fight. And you see the direct action. He's got these long arms. He didn't hit cleanly there, but look how he, uh, look how Macho Man holds on. What he does do is bang to the body real hard. And just, th look at that shot. Just prior to that right hand with the left hook that glanced off the side of Hector's temple, which stunned him a little bit, and he followed up and pressured him. And here's the end of the round where so much battle continues even after the bell. Look at that. Cortez doing a good job, but he, he had to separate them forcefully. Round four. Keep in mind, Camacho, in September of 92, went the distance with Julio Cesar Chavez. He was severely punished by Julio, but he remained on his feet the entire way, somewhat of a moral victory. And now Camacho is shaken up. He thumbed him in the eye or butted him? Yeah, it's the left eye of Hector Camacho claiming he was thumbed. And Joe Cortez is listening to the complaint where he should be making a ruling. Camacho, much in decision here. Camacho looking like he, he, he will not continue if, if not given the time. Oh, he will. He will. All right, he tries to clear out that left eye. Uh, Cortez just stood firm, said you will continue to fight. Well, he doesn't continue to fight, even if it's an out-and-out -out foul. He has to continue where the fight's over. Well, that was a precarious moment there. Good thing that we have a good, strong referee like Joe Cortez. Told him, you got to fight. You can no more time. I wonder what this does to the confidence of Trinidad. It's got to boost it a little. Well, I think that last round boosted him pretty good. He knows that if he hits him, he's going to get him in trouble. You'll start to see some more lead right hands with the right hand that was effective in the last round. Also, you might see Trinidad get a little more anxious, miss some big shots, and then get tired. So it could work both ways for him. Now, Trinidad's got to throw something. I mean, Bobby, he's got this guy running. He's got this guy scared. I want to use the word scared. Doesn't, I don't want to use it that way. He's got this guy cautious. Uh, Macho, Macho's cautious. He's felt the sting. He's felt the thumb, you know. And Camacho comes back with the left hand. 
Trinidad has a reputation of starting out slowly, being calm, waiting for his moment, but he might be too composed right now. He should go in. Another nice little life, left hand off the uh, cheekbone of Camacho. He's trying to time Camacho, something that is extremely difficult to do. He's so quick, it's difficult to time him down and so He has to do his pressing, enforce some mistakes, force some action, and get a slug press going. That's what the Macho Man needs to do. As soon as a punch is blocked, boom, react. Counter, react, counter, react. That's what he has to do. Camacho coming out of this eye thing pretty well. Yeah. Well, Camacho, look, look at that. Look at the feet. He, he rode he rode Camacho back on his foot. I mean, this is going to be a problem all night long. This guy's too tall, and Camacho's too short. Less than 30 seconds, round four. Nice crisp right hand by Trinidad. The kind he's got to put in to do the damage. When Camacho starts to get Trinidad's timing and rhythm down a little bit, it'll be interesting to see how his straight left hands, if they start landing, affect Trinidad. Nice right hand by Trinidad. And Camacho goes flat, flaring back. Trinidad continues to belt away after the bell for the first time. Let's see if there's any problem with the eye in Camacho's hand. working on his aisle at all, so therefore that means it's completely cleared. He's not complaining, so he is completely clear now. Uh, no problem there, he says, hey, we're all right, we're all right. They're telling him to make him, Trinidad, walk back, make him walk back. He doesn't know how to walk back. Take him to school now. Let's take a peek and see if we know where his eye got hurt. I think right there, it was a, he stuck his hand out and it just kind of, maybe the thumb just went into Hector's eye as Hector was running in. Didn't look intentional. I wasn't even totally sure it got in there. I, don't, I, I really didn't see it clear. His eye immediately closed up, but now it is wide open. And it affects your vision too. It hurts like hell. And it's and it double vision. Probably just got his eyelashes poked back in there for a little bit. All right. Round number five, scheduled for 12 for the IBF Welterweight Championship, Felix Trinidad. In the white trunks with the red trim, he's the champion. Sterling Camacho bringing his considerable skills. I haven't seen him this sharp in a long time. But this kid does not look impressed. Felix looks like he's just looking to land his bombs. Camacho told us he feels as sharp as ever and very strong at 147. And then against Chavez, he lost some steam because he had to lose weight. He says in retrospect he should have used more lateral movement, but he says the Chavez fight didn't take anything out of him. Something we really haven't talked about a lot is that this is at 147. This blazing fast as Camacho has always been, the ability he's had to punch whatever it may be, is at 140 and below. So he hasn't had a lot of competition this strong at 147. We're going to see in the later rounds how that strength affects him. Camacho won the WBC Junior Lightweight title in 83, the WBC Lightweight title in 85, and the WBO Junior Welterweight title in 89. His goal is to win a fourth title and then beat Chavez in a rematch. But he's got to get by Felix Trinidad. Nice counter left hand by Camacho there. Trinidad broke, drove him into the rope with a nice right hand. He bounced off, got his own left hand home. Yeah, the pace is heating up. Felix is heating up the pace and he's willing to eat some counter punches to do it and of course macho doesn't miss many chances to counter punch so this is getting to be very very interesting right now trinidad's doing something that i like when i, when I have to work with south and that's a nice lead right hand with a left hook counter either to the head or body and uh, right there saw another nice nice body shot landed and Camacho doing his hold on thing Camacho will hold on i mean he shows you when he's hurt he grabs no question about it. He's not embarrassed to do that. So you know when he's hurt. Good action by Camacho. Coming back with two hooks in counterpunch. Trinidad, as Bobby was talking about, a natural welterweight. Camacho isn't. Felix Sr. 
The trainer for Felix Jr. feels his son and pupil can knock out Camacho. You will see Trinidad as a junior middleweight and not too far down the road because right now I know he's had a trouble at 147. I've heard that from a number of people. Again, Again he's stepped on his foot. And uh, Camacho stumbles as a result. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know about that. Holding and hitting. Holding and hitting. One point deducted. Uh-oh. He's had a lot of trouble with him even at the end of the, at the, end of the rounds when they're holding. He won't let go even after Cortez says break. Therefore, the point, he won them three times. That brings the winning round down to an even. Re the reason he gets his points taken away, keep your eye on Felix. See how he's got his hand there? And now he's got his hand and he punches with the other. With the left, he's holding his head down with the right. He's hitting, and that is the note. And what we have to take into consideration here is Joe Cortez warned him twice and told him as we were going back to the corner of the round, if you keep holding and hitting, you're going to take the point. And he did not lie. He took that point. In, in a fight that's this close, that is a big one. I have now been at it for five rounds, and I've got it pretty even. I've got it dead even. I had the first two Camacho, the next two Trinidad. The last round I thought Trinidad edge until they took the point away. Exactly. So we're 46 46 and we're both went to the same school. So things really getting interesting now. Again, twice Felix put his foot right on top of uh, Camacho's foot. It doesn't seem to bother Camacho, I say that. The only difference is the ebb and flow of this. Looks like Felix is gaining steam, is chasing him harder and harder, and uh, Felix is running more and more. And in the eyes of the judge, this is the champion chasing the challenge. It's called ring generalship, aggression, and uh, sometimes the points go to the champion who's doing the chase. Felix Trinidad pressing to the attack. He's gaining confidence with each round that Camacho not only can't hurt him, but that he can reach Camacho and hurt Camacho. Camacho backing away, looking to avoid those stiff punches. That's exactly what Felix has got to do. He's got to make him feel the kind of power he's got, even if he hits just gloves. As Bobby pointed out, sometimes that goes right through the gloves and hits you on the head with your own gloves. Well, he's got to do that. He's got to make Felix, I mean, oh, nice shot by Camacho. He's got to make Camacho feel like, hey, this guy can really back. Not only that, but when you have your left hand in his face and he's got his gloves up, you're keeping him from hitting you. His hands are where they need to be to protect him. Bobby, do you think Trinidad has solved the southpaw style of Hector Camacho? But Camacho landing now. Yeah, he solved a lot of it, but again, he could get careless. He could do a lot of different things that go along with being an inexperienced champion and prideful young man that he is. He's got a lot solved, and there's going to be a few things that are not solved. There you go. Let's we'll see what Hector decides he's going to do, because I think that's key. The thing is, the, the urgency, the aggression of the champion. I mean, he keeps coming, and, and as far as the cut is concerned, it has pretty well subsided. They've done a good job. Uh, Macho has not been hitting it with a jab, so it doesn't open more. All in all, it looks like the tide is turning in favor of Felix Trinidad, the champion. Great defense by Camacho. I'll tell you, I think right now as the fight is laying out, Camacho's getting the short end of most of the exchanges. And the fight could very well be a close decision loss. But we've seen some very strange draws on, on fights over the years, and I wouldn't be real surprised. We saw one today. Vamos, 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 chétale, que ves también nuestra televisión. Nada, 
whole lot of things being said except give them water and macho saying nothing. All right, let's look at, at Trinidad at this attack that this young kid is trying to mount. He's having a hard time hitting him because he's one of the most elusive targets in boxing, but he is banging, and he is causing Camacho to lose points. There you see the end of the round again. Trinidad is on the attack. Camacho usually with his back against the ropes. Here it's no different. Trinidad trying to land those big shots, and Camacho doing his best to counter and slip, but then hold. Hold on for dear life. And round number seven. Round seven. Scheduled for 12. Hey, look at the foot on that again. Boy, I mean, that time it was all the way up to the instep. We go back to that third round where that one big right hand started to turn things around for Trinidad. The pace has swung. The tide has turned toward him. I have him head by point. But there is Camacho landing that straight left, which I was wondering how long it was going to take him to do. He needs to land that with consistency. There's a nice right hand by Felix Trinidad. Camacho, but no damage. No damage blocked. This kid is a decent defensive fighter as well as offensive fighter. He doesn't get hit clean. There are not many clean shots. The Worth. point taken away from Trinidad doesn't seem to have changed his thought process or his strategy. He's just not going to hit on the break or hold anymore. And he's pummeling the body of Macho Camacho who holds on. For a young kid, just 21, he really shows a lot of patience there. And composure. Absolutely. He's got a cut, doesn't bother. Takes a point away, doesn't bother. He's fighting a left-hander is maybe one of the best defensive fighters in boxing, and it doesn't bother him. So, let's see how this is going to work out. No holdings, says Joe Cortez to Camacho. He said, I'll take points if you hold that way. I don't know how you can do that, Bobby, just by holding on. You know what? If you really go back to boxing, look at the rules. It's, a, it's against the rules. It's illegal to clinch and hold on, yet it's look, a look. common boxing strategy. What he is talking about here, uh, Joe Cortez, is excessive holding to the point he dives into him to grab him and walks him and walk him around. That's oh, illegal. Nice punches. Nice combination of punches. They could have had, and Macho came back with a few just to answer. Body shot. Oh, great, great. oh, again, again, Macho talking about his eyes. I don't know if he's acting or what's going on here. I don't see those things happening. I don't see him getting hit. Right now, I can't tell you what, macho, what the Macho man is thinking, but he's not fighting as well as he, were to, as he was talking to us. He's not doing what he said he was going to do. He's not doing what we've seen him do in the past. Pumped heads there. Unfortunately, uh, no cuts. Final seconds of round seven. And this starts to take the aspect of a champion trying to make a fight and a challenger trying to avoid a fight. And that will lose him the fight uh, for Macho Camacho if this keeps up like this. Here at the MGM Grand Garden, capacity 15,200, the first ever boxing event here at this new arena. Seeing the super grand slam of boxing. Steve Albert, the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, former two-time world champion Bobby Chez and Jim Hill on hand here tonight in Las Vegas. Let's see what this champion is doing to turn the, the crowd and to turn the, uh, the fight his way. He's dominant right now. He is just boxing and putting in his punches. Then good defense and look who smothers him. Well Ended around, you see, as we're coming in, backing, backing up constantly for Macho and the champion. That blow, may, that blow may have been a little low, but once again, he's working the body, he's working the head, and Camacho is forced to do nothing but hurt. And Bobby he grabbed him by the back of the head and pulled him in. That's a no-no also. Right, but when you're getting hit, you'll do what you have to. Yeah, but the guy lost a round. For the, lost the point. Joe Cortez has got his hands full today. Camacho comes out wing and looks a little more determined now as we enter round eight. But he keeps backpedaling. 
against the on-rushing Trinidad, the champion. Well, this is the same tactic that doesn't make them a favorite in Puerto Rico. I mean, you, you take the great champions, they came ahead and they gave you battle. This guy, look, look at his hole. I mean, you hear the, the fans now getting on Camacho. Puerto Rico, rich in boxing heritage. The island has produced 30 world champions in less than 60 years, including these two here. Felix Trinidad, who is controlling this fight against Hector Camacho. It could be very possible that the torch has to be handed on to the younger generation right now. Hector just doesn't look to have uh, the old fire. I thought I was going to see the resurrection of Hector, but right now he, he's faltering. I don't know what kind of problems he's having with the eye, but he's having an awful lot of problems with the man in front of him. And you have to wonder if in due time will Felix Trinidad uh, someday be rated amongst the elite of Puerto Rican fighters. Well, he's got every element that makes fighters great, Puerto Rican or otherwise. He's on the attack all the time. He won't go back. He's got a great defense. He's got a lion's heart. Same thing made Wilfredo Gomez great, Carlos Ortiz great. Same thing that made Benitez great. That's what, that's what a great fighter, Puerto Rican, Mexican, or whatever. That's what makes a great fighter. Despite all the wacky antics he displays in the ring and out, I think Hector Camacho is a real good guy. And right now, I know he can fight better than this. I'm not sure what, what is wrong besides the fact that Trinidad is so good, but something just doesn't look right to me. Well, he might have fritter away all his talents with all the high life and the fun that he's had, and he can't draw it back. When it reaches a time in life when it catches up with you, it just may have caught up with him. Although this fight is far from over, and it's far from being what we think it is right now. I mean, the judges could be looking at this beautiful ring generalship of Macho Camacho. Well, there's no questioning the heights Camacho has reached as a boxer, three-time world champ and all. But imagine how much higher he might have gone had he been more responsible unless a straight kid outside the ring. You never know. And now the holding, cautioning by Joe Cortez. Let's go. Let's go. That's the second one. That, that's the second one. That's a serious one. That's before the whole public. You keep on holding and taking the point. This is going to make for an interesting fight. It has to change Camacho's style because holding is part of his style. Yeah. Always has been, always will be, especially with punches. Bobby, I don't think he can change. See that? I don't think he can change that. I don't think he can change it. That's part of his style. Well, right now he's trying every trick in the book, legal or illegal. Final seconds of the eight. Fast bell. Third world championship doing that. Hitting and holding, and then we backed up, leaving that left hand out there for some more. Yeah, but he did a lot of things well during his career. You have, to, you have to say what stage he was in. I mean, you know, he, he had different stages. Camacho is receiving some long, cold stares from Joe Cortez right now. He better be careful. Again, with the foot, almost every round has had the foot problem. And, it, and it's never Camacho's foot on top of Trinidad. So it's Trinidad on top of him. Trinidad slowed down just a pinch in this round. Camacho's got to land a few more straight lefts. Uh, not real effective, but landing. Trinidad is a knockout artist. That's no losses. Whoa, body shots by Trinidad. That's, what, that's an old Lou Rodriguez sh shot. A hard right by Trinidad that rocked Camacho. Camacho's going to hold on now. You watch this point get close. I know, he, he said it again. He's, he's talking about it. I don't know how many more times he's got to say it. What does he need, carbon paper? Trinidad, all kinds of confidence now. Dancing around, looking for the opening. And avoiding here it comes. No, he didn't do it again. Boy, he sure is plus year career. And that's next on the docket here at the MGM Grand Garden in Las Vegas. And Bobby, did you expect anything different in this? 
I mean, did you expect, I know you like Camacho here in left up, but did you expect this kid to be this good and Camacho to be this bad? I don't mean bad, I mean he's just not effective. Well, what I, I expected him to, at certain points, be this ineffective because I knew that Trinidad was strong and going to force this, but I expected him to be a little more effective in a lot of areas, frustrate Trinidad, land more cleanly, and just be better. Well, it's certainly going to be interesting to see what the scoring is going to be. We've had some really creative scoring here. I've, I've got him ahead. 86 to 82. What do you got, Bob? I believe I have it 86 to 83. And, you know, it's, uh, right now it doesn't appear as if either fighter's got the ability to knock the other out. Camacho's always going to hold, run, dodge, Bob, weave, hold. Uh, if, they take a, uh, if they take a round away from him at this point, he can kiss a goodbye. It won't help his case. Take a point away right now. On a counter punch, left hand oh, goes look at that and holding wait, wait, again. Wait, look, look, look. Wait, 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 wait. He's waltzing he's, because he got he got in trouble. He got in trouble. Time called by Joe Cortez. There's the point, Bobby. But he got in trouble. His legs went crazy, and he, he, he held on. I'll tell you what, it's a lesser of two evils right now. Now yep. we talked about it before, but that 147 pounds, he's not getting hit by 140 pounders anymore. Can he withstand the onslaught of this young man? He's going to hold on again. And, and now he's going to keep doing it. And now he spins Trinidad around, hearing it again from the crowd. Camacho. He got hit. He got hit hard, and his legs wobbled on him. That's when he grabbed him. Well, he's got to back that up and take a look at that in, in replay because something hit him very hard. Joe Cortez, or no Joe Cortez, he wasn't a, about to let loose. This now becomes a 10-8 round. We take one point away. And uh, you'd have to do some creative uh, adding and subtracting to give this fight to Camacho thus far all the way here in the 10th round. Hasten to add, you can negate the scores by knocking your opponent out. Look, look at the grab. Look, look, look. What is he going to do? Take another point, Bobby? Camacho's in trouble. clean fight said Joe Cortez he said you keep doing that but he never finished the set well be because he's in trouble Hector Macho Camacho's in trouble and here's the place it comes into the corner and a hole he's going to be disqualified if he continues to do that we can see Cortez trying oh, to get Camacho man every benefit doesn't want to disqualify him he may not have to as Trinidad loads up Big trouble for Hector Macho Camacho as this young guy has got he the He might rest. go down for the first time. Camacho first needs time. that rest. He needs that corner. He's got 25 seconds to go. And if he doesn't get that corner, I'll tell you what. This fight could be over. This kid is coming on like a cavalry charge. That's what this kid is. And we keep calling him a kid. He's not. He's a man. He is a champion. He is a killer instinct champion. He made it. Wow, what a round, Bobby. After this many, see how his legs went just then? Something happened, had happened to him, was a delayed reaction to a punch. Now watch how he grabs, there's no way Cortez, that's flagrant, flagrant, you can't, you can't permit that, especially after he's been warned so many times. Cortez actually went way out of the way to help him, and now, after that, he comes back, Bobby, look at this. I know, he's got him, now he's got him in a lot of trouble, he's pushing him back, he's hurt him. Something in Camacho went wrong, I don't know if he got hit in the temple and his legs just went, but he wasn't right, he never recovered. We'll see what the one minute is done during the rest of the game. He was clearly out of it. Okay. He looks just now to his corner. He's kicking his legs to get some feeling in. Well, he is behind now. He is behind no matter who's keeping score right now. Here we go, round 11. Felix Trinidad looking to end it. Against a man who has never tasted the canvas, Hector Camacho.
Felix Trinidad's first trip past 10 rounds. So uncharted territory doesn't seem to mind. And he continues his pursuit of the Macho Man. Camacho just keeping his distance, trying to avoid those lethal punches of Trinidad. He is in a survival mode. Exactly. This is Bobby. not the win now, now it's to survive. Now it's hurt, not. he doesn't have it, this is to survive. This is to, to make it to 12, just like he did with Chavez. He's taken his beating, now he's going to make it to 12. He's just not taking as much punishment as was dished out by Chavez. But he is feeling the effects. And yet he appeared more hurt and more out of it. Did he though? Oh, no, really? Trinidad could get a little sloppy now and start lunging, but the thing is, Macho might not have the power to knock him out. He's never been a knockout puncher, but he's always been quick. Timing could be something here, you can never tell. I don't think Macho wants to even take the chance of throwing a good hard punch. He looks like he is what you just correctly said, a survival mode. This is a round to survive. Clear his head. He doesn't mind blowing it as long as he doesn't get knocked out. If Trinidad does have a knockout punch, it's a left hook, but he also has a wicked right hand. All right. Break, break. This guy has power in either hand. I mean, he is a good, hard puncher, and he also punishes the body. We saw that against Maurice Blocker and Luis Garcia. Such an innocent baby face, he's got the killer instinct of Rocky Graziano, Rocky Marciano, all those tough guys, lovely faces. And Rocky Balboa. No, he's just got a good one. And a good script. Pace slowing. Again, we're in survival mode. Not going to make the fight any more exciting, but he's going another round. He's going to survive. He's a prideful human being. He's, he's a fighter that absolutely will not quit but here he knows he can't win anything i think he feels it. i think he senses it but he doesn't want to get stopped it's a matter of pride now well it's turned into a foot race now and round 11 over I'm telling him this is the last round as if he didn't know it. He says, you're letting him walk forward. You're not doing anything. Macho is not saying a word. They're saying to him he's winning. He needs his last round to win. They are actually telling him he's winning this fight. In this corner, in this corner, everyone's telling him you're winning, but don't remember, it's better to knock him out. Could be a mistake. Yamil said, he said, do it for your mother. That's pretty strong. You know, you can do it for his father. He's in the corner already. Do it for everybody. Today is his... Uh, Manager who thinks he'll be a superstar someday as they touch gloves. Twelfth round. Jamil today told me he's going to knock this guy out, and then he's going to beat uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, and that's the program they got. It's a little too early in the game to talk about Julio Cesar Chavez in my book. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little premature for that one. Yeah. But I can't believe they've got Camacho winning in that corner. Well, we, let's not say anything until we hear what the judges think. Remember, we're in Las Vegas. We have. Had surprises in Las Vegas. And don't forget, the corner will say just about anything short of the winner your mama die. They will try anything to employ the fighter in the final seconds of a fight to do whatever he has to pull it out. This is it. It's three minutes. What else can go wrong? If they can give this, if they can give this running retreat to uh, Hector Camacho and the decision give the championship, then they are truly charitable cases. They are. And blind as well. I can't see. Yeah, I don't know about charity. I mean, blind would be better. I mean, you just cannot win a championship going away, holding, getting penalized for holding. I have Trinidad comfortably ahead. He doesn't need to force the fight here. He just doesn't have to make any mistakes. 
he, 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 can, he, can, he can lose this round and still be so far ahead. He's got change coming. Oh, yeah, he can get knocked down and still have change left over. This could be the first time he goes 12 rounds. Great. Felix Trinidad. I think Macho has, has paid the price of wasting his talent on high life and not having the energy that he needs. You can't just keep playing that high life and have it not come back and home. Body shots again by Felix Trinidad. It's just not there. Camacho has thrown in the proverbial towel, but he's going to stay on his feet. He wants to finish this one on his feet. The last uh, three or four rounds have been clearly survival mode for Camacho. You have to say Camacho, for all of the uh, faults that he has, is a prideful man, as Bobby said, and he has, in the ring, always tried to survive at least a 12. He just won't, won't quit. Well, so let's, let's give him that. We saw the ultimate uh, case with Chavez. Yeah, but let's give him that. You know, we've seen a lot of fighters stay past their welcome. I certainly hope I don't do it. I, I broke my heart to watch Sugar Ray when he got beat up by Carson. Come on, guys. Let me maybe he's past his welcome. Yeah. The, the only difference is he showed a lot of courage and fortitude, more so against Chavez. His stock actually went up in losing to Chavez as opposed to tonight. Yeah, because up to that point, they, he just never showed up for a fight. I mean, in that fight, at least he took In this fight, he just run. I'm convinced something's wrong. Something contributed to this terrible performance. The Macho Man is still better than what we've seen tonight. It's over, and the resume is that the champion maintains it as far as Bobby Chez and Ferdy Pacheco and Steve Albert are concerned. Let us see what we find out from the judges in this hinky-dinky world of Las Vegas. Well, both are hoisted into the air, and Hector Macho Camacho, in his mind, is victorious. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing here at the MGM Grand Garden, we have a unanimous decision, and I will read the score totals. Judge at ringside, Glenn Hamada, scores about 116-110. Mike Gliena scores about 117-109. Dolby Shirley scores about 119-106. All three in favor of the winner, and still champion, Felix Tito Trinidad. So there it is across the board.